We're joined now by Charlotte 49ers head coach Biff Pogey. And I'm so glad that this is this is how we're getting them. We're getting them cigar break after practice, before meetings. The the sleeves are off, the V-neck is deep. Coach, how are we doing? <laughs> hey Andy, how you doing, man? So I, I have I don't even know where to start with you because you fascinate me completely. Uh, because I, I go back to a career of, you know, you, you play football at Pitt. You're going to be a coach. You're going to be a teacher. Your father-in-law pulls you aside and said, how are you going to take care of my daughter and that baby that you have coming? I guess we can start, start there because that, that's where the Renaissance man piece of you starts. You went in, in, into business with your father-in-law. You end up running a hedge fund. How tough was the pull of the coaching you had to leave behind to do that? Uh, you know, it was hard. I mean, football was a huge part of my life as a kid and a young adult. And, and then, um, you know, my my father-in-law uh, it was a realist, you know, and a, and a very smart man, MIT Sloan fellow in business. And, of course, you know, he liked me, but he loved his daughter and his grand. His, <laughs> grandkids and was like okay buddy how are we going to get this done so um you know he he approached me in a way that was um interesting and then he um you know he really uh it clicked for me i was not never a great student at all i was a terrible student as a matter of fact and never had much math um, a horrible math student but somehow uh the the, the the art and the science of investing just clicked for me and so um you know 37 years later here we are but yeah. you you work you were coaching you know once you got that rolling mm -hmm. you you started coaching went to your alma mater gilman right. built the the saint francis academy when did you realize I, I need to be back in football i need to be around a team well i knew that I never stopped coaching, right? Yeah. Uh, coaching high school was great because you show up at 2 o'clock and you leave at 5, and, you know, it's great. Uh, but, you know, once my kids grew, grew up and moved out of the house, went to college, uh, you know, uh, my old friend Jim Harbaugh called me and uh, said, will you come up and help? And I said, yes. And I went there in 2016, our Orange Bowl year. Uh, my mm -hmm. son was a was a really good player there and Henry. Uh, yeah. Old Henry. And, um, and then at the end of the 16 season, I said, Jim, you know, um, Baltimore's a mess. The city of Baltimore, that's where, where I'm from. Baltimore's a mess. And there's a school there that I think I can, my wife and I really believe we can help. It was getting ready to close. And, uh, and so we went to St. Francis and it was kind of a comprehensive thing at St. Francis. So it was, scholarships for kids it was um housing it was hiring math teachers and science teachers and english teachers it was study hall uh it was tutors it was very comprehensive and so we did that and, I, and I, as a way to help a community that we grew up in uh that i grew up in um but but also to help kids that just really didn't didn't have you know came from tough backgrounds. And mm -hmm. so was the, well, I was there four years. It was incredibly rewarding. Uh, COVID hit. You know, Michigan kind of had a tough 20, 20 year. Jim and I talk all the time anyway, um, like we do now. And, um, and, and Jim said to me, you know, um, would you consider coming back? And I said, yes. But only if I can, you know, make sure St. Francis is taken care of. St. Francis got taken care of, and I went back to uh, Michigan for 21 and 22. And um, that whole time, by the way, uh, you know, I was involved with my fund, except in um, 16, 21, and 22, and of course mm -hmm. now. But I have, uh, I have other people running it now. It's ex-players running it, right? Guys who played for you. Former players, yeah. yeah. Not bad. That's a, I mean, that's the thing. You, 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 it seems like every time you talk about what – your team can do for someone you're talking in terms of 20 years from now and how you've got so much proof of concept with that how much does it help you when you're recruiting players now well i call our recruiting pitch when people 
kids and their parents come in. I call it the anti-recruiting pitch. Um, I said, because my job is to try to get you not to want to come here. Because <laughs> what I tell them is, in my opinion, not all, obviously, but many football coaches are great prevaricators. You know, they, they are great mm-hmm. at looking at a kid and his family and saying, okay, about 15 seconds, okay, this is what this kid wants to hear and is what his parent or parents want to hear. And they tell you that whether it's true or not. And, and I'm not going to do that. And so what I tell them is I'm going to um, tell you what I think you need to hear. And so we talk about – we don't even talk about football in the recruiting pitch. Um, we start with our vision, and the vision page has nothing to do with football. It, our vision is to create men of empathy and faith – who will become good fathers, sons, husbands, and members of the community to serve those who are left for, fortunate. That's why we're doing it. And in, a, in a few words, we call it building men for others. And, and you know, what, what does that involve? It involves um, got to go to school, got to go to class, you got to get an education, and not some education at some absurd degree that is not commercial. So we have a mandatory, we put in a really cool, really cool mandatory um, uh, financial literacy curriculum, 13 weeks. They have to take it. It's mandatory. They absolutely love it. And then coupled with that, we, uh, you know, Charlotte's an unbelievable city for business, the banking capital, really, of the country. More Fortune 500 and 1,000 companies are moving to Charlotte because all the financing is here. It's a vibrant, vibrant city. And though we went around and met a bunch of old friends that we did business with over the years and new friends that we're making, and uh, they do an eight-week internship after that financial literacy program. They go down, put their suits on, go downtown, and, uh, and, and you know, they get paid to do it. It's, it's a, they get $1,000 a week for eight weeks. I give them that time to do it instead of doing football because I think it's important for their lives. And you know, the other thing in recruiting we tell them is this. There's only two types of coaches. There's transactional coaches and there's transformational coaches. Transactional coaches care about their next contract, the next bigger job, the uh, TV show, how many wins they have. Transformational coaches are in it for the kids. And the nice thing about me being a little older and also, you know, having had success in business, I don't, I don't care about the next contract. It doesn't, I'm not in it for that. So I'm in it for them. I imagine in, in 19 years at Gilman and then the four at St. Francis where you had college coaches coming in and out all the time, you learned quite a bit about what it takes to be a good college recruiter and what, what not to do. Uh, what did you, what, what are the biggest lessons you took from dealing with coaches over the years? Well, a really good question, Andy. Um, I learned a lot about what not to do. I also have, you know, four sons that played division one college football. And so I sat in the seat, the parents sit in mm-hmm. and some of the stories are so fantastic. They're like, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're like the Harry Potter series. They're so enthralling. They're so fantastic. And, and what I learned is this, when you approach a kid who comes into your building, remember this, you're, you are recruiting and coaching a mother's son. And what that means is this. That's the most precious thing in the world to that mother. And I have a wife, and we had those four boys. And, you know, I I know what it meant to her. And I know how disappointed she was when we found out people weren't, you know, when 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 their Pinocchio noses were growing. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the major thing is always tell the truth. So... You get to Michigan, and and Jim Harbaugh said one of the most important things you did there was you could tell him the truth and weren't worried about how he was going to react, weren't worried about your job. What was some of the first pieces of advice you gave him when when you got in there? Well, first of all, Jim is a very unique person. Jim is really intelligent. Jim happens to be a football coach. He loves football. But but Jim could be anything, right? He could be a position he could be a, 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 a you know he could run a hedge fund he's really smart and 
is very rare characteristic to have someone who says to you, I want you to tell me what you perceive to be the truth. And, um, and, and so, so Jim was open to it. And, you know, the things that we talked about, I don't want to, to divulge those because they were very personal, but, you know, he, he took my advice, um, not all the time, but a lot of the time. And, uh, and that just made us, everybody in the building better, made me better, made him better, made our assistants better, made our players better. And, and so, you know, I think that's a very important person to have on your staff. What happens in college, um, uh, in, in, in college football buildings is the coach, the head coach is like the king. You know, he's like Charles the Third. You know, he walks around and everybody genuflects and is ex-European history teacher here. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, right. And so you know, genuflects and they don't even call him, you know, by their name. They call him Coach. And everybody in the building says, "Well, Coach said this." Well, what Coach? Well, it's always the head coach. And so, you know, Jim was not like that. I don't believe in running it that way. And um, and and so you know. Yeah, we, we had a really good culture there at Michigan, and we're putting the same culture here at Charlotte. Who's your Biff Pogey? Mm, good question. Um, let me keep my cigar to it. No, no problem. Uh, it's John Jacobson. John is the uh, our assistant head coach. John is a friend of mine. He's 46. I've known John 46 years. We were in high school together at Gilman. And John is a very was a very successful hedge fund investor. So we, we, we have a lot in common. And uh, as a matter of fact, just this very day, uh, John said to me on the practice field, he said, I, I want to talk to you. I, um, he talked to you privately in your office and he came up and it was a, a really hard conversation and a great conversation. Um, and, uh, and he was right. He was absolutely right. So, you know, that's my guy right there. So you've got a, a couple of guys who played for you at St. Francis, uh, Demond Clowney, uh, Big Wall, big defensive tackle, Jonathan Wallace. And you, you know, you've flipped this roster pretty quickly. What were you looking for when, when you were looking for new players? Because you're, you're going into a new conference. This is, you know, going to the American Conference, a completely different era of Charlotte football starting now. Yeah, I, we have 24 St. Francis kids. Wow. Um, and we have um, – 28 kids out of the portal as uh, that's 52 and we kept 52. Now that, that was not by design, but that's just how it worked out. With. And what I was looking for in the portal were the uh, same thing I was looking for when I hired my coaches, I wanted good men and good kids. And then we will we f- want to find that first and then we'll figure out about, you know, who's a good player and that kind of stuff. So I, I do want to, Thank you for something you said in your, your introductory press conference. You, uh, you outlined your defense where you said, we're going to stop the run. When we make you one-dimensional and make you throw, we're going to light you up. I appreciate you explaining somewhat of what the defense will look like without saying we're going to be multiple because we know it's not completely a state secret, but uh, you, you've imported basically the, the Ravens and Michigan's defense here. How is that going with, with Ryan Osborne at, at D.C.? He's brilliant. He's young. He works like, yeah, he's a wild man. He works so hard. And the kids love him. I mean, you know, we had Mozzie Smith here, uh, came to work with, with uh, Oz. Um, we had, um, uh, Jesus, I'm losing, but, uh, Aiden Hutchinson came down. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, players that, players that play for him love him. And they love him because he, he makes them better. He's honest with them, and he's completely fair with them. So our defense right now is, I got to tell you, is elite. It is, you know, I stand behind the offense because I don't want to get run over. And um, <laughs> and it is just so disconcerting because there's no leverage on the defense. They're everywhere. They come from every place. You can't run the ball on them. It is like you're an offensive coach. It'll drive you to start drinking heavily. <laughs> Well, I cannot wait to see it. I, I now I got to ask you because you you obviously have been very successful at everything you've ever tried. You're you're very, not a lot of steps ahead of most of us. Not so, everything. Eh. I haven't been successful in losing all the weight I want to lose. 
whatever. Yeah, you know, there's a few. I can, I can, I can help. I, I lost about sixty two years ago. So if you, you need me, you. you need a calorie count, buddy. I you just text me. I'll. Uh, Good for you. I'm like I got, I got that. a few people who text me now. Like, what's, what's this spoonful of peanut butter? How many calories do I put in? I totally just, love it. You got to put them all in and guilt yourself <laughs> into not eating. So, but uh, I th- this this press conference, the the American Athletic Conference media days, where you you. You don't get any more questions, and you say, "That's it. Three questions. Maybe right, that's because you have us ranked last. That's all what you think of us. <laughs> so that that we, we get that message. Thank you." And you say, "That's it. Three questions." Now, what you did after that got Charlotte football more attention than if you'd had five more questions asked. Were you thinking that in the moment, or were you just pissed that you only got three questions? I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, it, it was both. I was furious about the three questions. Um, but that's galvanized our football team. Hey, look, we, 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 believe it or not, you know, we can read, and we've seen all the preseason predictions and the – you know, the Vegas line of two games and all that nonsense. And uh, and that just galvanized it. That was the fire in the furnace that made us pure. And I got to tell you something. I've been in a lot of places. I've been I've been in, God, I don't even I don't know how I can't do the math, but 45 uh, opening, you know, training camps for college, either as a player or a coach. Um, or, or a high school coach, I've never seen anything like this. This is really cool. And I, I don't know how you predict a conference that has this many new members anyway. So it, it seems to be a bit of a fool's errand, but I am glad it's, it's given you guys some motivation. A lot. A lot. Uh, yeah, they are, I would say this, they're beautiful, wonderful kids off the field. I love them to death. I really do. I care so deeply about them. But on the field, as I said, I mean, they are bad company. I mean, they are just so grumpy. It is, it is amazing. And so I love it. Well, Biff, thank you so much. Cannot wait to see them actually play on a game day. So uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.